Why is every clinic telling me I should have some NAD, et cetera? Well, here's the thing. We get all the way down, get into your cells. Cells aren't working right, or you're trying to, you know, give kickstart your cells again, or maybe you've done some recreational or other things that have really slowed your brain down. You know, you had some problems with addiction, etc. Getting the mitochondria in your cells to wake back up and do their job helps to get the body back online. So getting NAD levels up in the body helps because. The Nutrient NAD, your top six questions answered today. Hey, I'm Dr. Ray. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I love talking about all things integrative medicine, naturopathic medicine, regular allopathic medicine, any questions you guys like to ask. And I try and answer them here on video because I just do not have the time to type out answers to everything. So let's get into NAD. First off, it uh, stands for a nutrient nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So we'll just call it NAD from here on out. Out. It's in the news. People are advertising they're using it. I get a lot of questions about is this just some hype thing or whatever. And so let's just go through the big six questions that we see. The first thing is, and this is a legit concern that everyone should have, is if you ever see something promoted, I don't care whether it's a drug from a pharma company or a natural substance or a new type of a car or whatever, and it just seems to do everything correctly and, and it, it cures everything, you should really probably probably look into it, do a little due diligence around it, all right? Same with, with things in the nutritional world, but I just want to break this down so you kind of know the pluses and minuses of NAD. So the first thing is, we said it's nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. What that really means is niacin vitamin B3 comes in two forms. There is nicotinic acid and then there is niacinamide or niacinamide, depending on what part of the country you've come from. So niacinamide is the piece that is put into NAD. And so what you have is a stack of two niacinamides and then a joining bit of chemistry that uh, has uh, some specific sugars in it. So it's sort of a kind of a U slash Y shaped molecule. Why would we care about that? Well, NAD is kind of the final step as a cofactor in most of the operations in the body that vitamin B3, the nicotinamide, you know, family uses. So if I can get NAD in its fully formed, you know, complex molecule instead of just nicotinamide, I'm probably going to get a bigger effect from it. And in, indeed, that is largely true. Now, a question people will have is, do I have to inject? Because it seems like every place I go looking for NAD, they're going to give me an IV or have me injected subcutaneously or intramuscularly. Well, the reason for that is it is this giant molecule. And if you look, when I teach doctors about, you know, the use of these, these things like NAD and stuff like that, I show a picture of nicotinamide and it's sort of this kind of general molecule here. And then this big old funky NAD over here. And it's like, what's going to happen if I eat this big old funky molecule versus I eat this one nicotinamide? Well, nicotinamide is going to go in. Largely, it's going to be transported into my blood. But then I got to put a bunch of it together to make this funky NAD molecule. If I take NAD orally, most of it is going to get broken down and it's going to be very inefficient, right? Now, here's the footnote. There are a couple types of precursors to NAD that you can take orally. And so if nicotinamide, plain vitamin B3, the nicotinamide form, is kind of your base, then priming or giving you NAD producing power goes up a couple of notches with these other oral molecules. So let's say you don't want to go get shots and stuff like that. You can take nicotinamide riboside, often known as NR, or nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN. Those are two of the precursor molecules to making NAD in the body. Well, so is plain old cheap nicotinamide. It's just nicotinamide makes NAD easier than plain niacin. NR and NMN make it even easier. So a lot of times you'll be put on this for whatever the purpose is that we'll get. But if you really want NAD and you want it full force, normally they're going to give it to it intravenously, maybe as you know, subcutaneous or an intramuscular injection. So then the next question is, okay, well, that's some wonderful you know nutritional biochemistry there, Paul. Why is every clinic telling me I should have some NAD, etc.? Well, here's 
We get all the way down, get into your cells. Cells aren't working right, or you're trying to, you know, get kickstart your cells again, or maybe you've done some recreational or other things that have really slowed your brain down. You know, you had some problems with addiction, etc. Getting the mitochondria in your cells to wake back up and do their job helps to get the body back online. So getting NAD levels up in the body helps because it turns out that the major way that the mitochondria, which give you all this energy and make your cells operate, the major way that they get their sort of electrical current to move energy and make ATP so that you have energy for yourself is through the breakdown of the family of NAD. It's not just NAD, but it's the family of NAD. So if somebody goes and they put some NAD into an IV bag and then they put an IV in your arm and the NAD goes in, you're going to usually feel that you don't feel energy etc well that's because your mitochondria are waking up right this is a good thing so what if i do it the oral way well if you take nr or nmn or even long term taking niacinamide but remember it's quite a lot slower you're going to sometimes feel the same thing and i've experimented with all different types of this and i can definitely tell you if i inject it you feel it right away usually if i take plain old nictinamide which is the cheapest of all of them i it's very subtle. If I take NMN or NR, nicotinamide mononucleotide or nicotinamide riboside, I can actually feel an energetic shift, meaning not a you know external uh, ethereal one, but I mean an actual energy in my body shift within a couple hours of taking it orally. So it really does help. Now, just because something helps doesn't mean it's always the best thing in the world for you, right? Other things that help your mitochondria work are thyroid, right? So certainly if you have a thyroid problem, you want to fix that because you know NAD is going to help, but it's that's not fixing the thyroid problem. Uh, other things that hurt your, your, thy, uh, your mitochondria operating would be toxins. You get rid of that stuff. You won't need as much. We mentioned, you know, drug abuse, alcohol. It's used in uh, drug abuse alcohol centers. Same thing. It's we're just trying to undo the damage that was done before. So common conditions it's used for tend to operate around or or circulate around mitochondrial slowness. So recovery, people with long COVID are using it. Seems to work pretty good there. People with chronic fatigue use it. Fibromyalgia. Uh, people with po po other post viral syndromes. People recovering from surgeries. Any recovery sort of. Thing. Thing. Anybody has a long-term chronic illness can be very helpful there. I mentioned in addiction use. Now, in addiction use, it's used quite differently. And if you get, if you're going to an addiction center that does NAD therapy, they're usually very specially trained because they're using much higher doses than the average place does, and they're doing it in concert with other types of therapies. Addiction sort of a different use of it, but you can think of it. Addictions often are two toxicants or toxins in the environment, and toxins in the environment literally stop your mitochondria from working appropriately. So again, helping the cells come back online, especially you stop the whatever uh, thing you were toxifying yourself with, the whatever addictive substance, now you're putting nutrients in, you get in mitochondria work, and again, your brain will start to operate better. And I've, I've known a number of people who use this in addiction and recovery, and it, it's, a, it's a very good synergy. It doesn't fix everything. There are many other things you have to do, but that's another reason that it is used. It's also used in people for athletic recovery. and other, any, Just think about anything where your cells need to turn back on. Now, there's always one little footnote, and this really deserves its own video, and I will probably make my own video on it, but that is, should I avoid it if I have cancer? Now, normally, and if you look behind me in the fuzziness, there's some books I've written about cancer, and some of them deal with this topic. Normally, Normally, nutrients are not that much of a danger in cancer unless you're doing you know, super high amounts, in which case you should be working with someone who does that, right? The concern, now it's a theoretical concern, and there are papers on both sides of this, the ledger here. But the concern is if you use it periodically, like let's say you recover from cancer and you also went to a drug treatment center and they used NAD, right? You're not going to be at the drug treatment center forever and ever, right? So short time to get a job done physiologically or pathologically, it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to turn your cancer back on. Kind of the same as if I have a long COVID patient and they're 
somewhere in their cancer journey or they or their intermission or whatever and i'm using nm uh, nictinamide mononucleotide or nr nictinamide riboside or injectable i'll do it for a particular outcome to get their mitochondria back online and then i'm going to back off i'm going to i'm going to slow down on the you know putting the nad into the body the rest of there's papers on both sides some are like no it can never happen some are like no we don't know some of the best written biochemistry I have ever tried to understand and read, which means it took me a number of readings to go through in papers around cancer, is your body, remember NAD is in the middle of a family of molecules. Your body uses that family of molecules for mitochondrial function, which is great, but also for a ton of other stuff. And if you don't have a really good, robustly healthy body and there's cancer that might you know, need a little nudge in one direction and you put a whole bunch of NAD into the person, theoretically, according to some pretty smart biochemists, you could metabolize that NAD in a way that might do that. So it's, as I say, as a therapeutic use, again, only do what your doctor tells you. I'm just talking, just telling you my experience. But if, if I see a patient and they have a therapeutic goal to get this out of NAD therapy, whether it's oral through NR, NMN, or IV through, you know, IV NAD, we're going to do that goal. We're going to do that treatment protocol. If it's a longer term thing, like long COVID, something like that, I'm going to start, I'm going to give it to them every day. And then if we get past a couple of months, I'm probably going to give it to them five days a week. And if we're out six months later and they're still needing it, which in some long COVID patients is true, you know, I might be like four days on and three days off just so it's a nutritional uh, buildup in the body, but I'm not putting more in every single day. So as far as danger goes, that's really, it, it is an area of contention in the scientific literature, whether it would have any effect or not. As someone who's worked with cancer patients for a very long time, I'm very, very comfortable with nutrients and cancer, and most nutrients are not going to make your cancer get worse. I promise you that. But because there is this effect where this is a complex molecule and uh, there's a difference between me putting you through addiction treatment uh, for a couple of months and giving you a bunch of it, or me th putting you through post-COVID treatment for, you know, two, three, four, five months and give me a bunch of it, or you just taking it forever and ever. It was two different dosing strategies. My approach is use it for when you need it. As your body gets back online and you're getting more strong and everything's working, you can dial back down, use the simple molecule niacinamide, which is just the plain uh, amid form of vitamin B3. And uh, that one's not going to hurt anything. And you can use that as maintenance. I'm really glad someone asked this question. Again, we'll probably do other ones on this, but that gets me to the big six on NAD. Please check out the other videos we're going to put up here somewhere on the screen. Check out our playlist on YouTube. Uh, and I can't wait to talk to you on the next recording. Thank you.